all Snapchat. So yesterday was the Ethereum hack day for Ethereum. So imagine 80 people in a room building dApps, DAOs, and smart contracts for the Ethereum blockchain. Decentralized everything. So myself and a mate Tristan started the City of Theory meetup maybe like two years ago um, because we knew it was going to be massive and we wanted to find other people who wanted to build stuff on the blockchain. But since then it's grown well beyond us, which is awesome. The meetup itself is actually decentralized to the point where many co-organizers and people are helping run events and give talks just, you know, by themselves. We don't have to be that involved. Um, and on top of that, the Ethereum network's gone nuts. I think actually uh, one of our first meetups was pre crowd sales. So Ether, which is the cryptocurrency that powers the developer platform for Ethereum, it's not really about cryptocurrency, but it started at 20 cents. It's gone over $20 at one point. Which means not only is there an awesome community forming in Sydney around developers uh, wanting to decentralize the world and, and create awesome dApps on the blockchain, there are millionaires in that group now. Anyway, that's just a bit of background. So yesterday, I, most of my day was spent thinking of this concept, which I, I, I'm still processing, but I'll try and explain it to you. There's this really awesome older guy who comes to the meetups. Um, he's got kind of like a Zen Buddhist monk quality to him. He's really jolly and he's like so friendly and awesome. So we're discussing something uh, about the abstract view of blockchain. I'm completely paraphrasing my own interpretation, but basically what he was saying that like, particularly in the West, we're very attuned to physical things, like physical objects, you know, that have borders and mass and you can kind of touch, they're fixed. Like this, this rock is fixed and it's, it's unchanging, it's so, and fixed things you can kind of like trust, I guess, you know, you can build a bridge with this, you can build a wall with this. Whereas say in the digital world, so like everything on the internet, it's, it's completely changing, it's nothing's ever fixed, it changes from day to day, from second to second, it's this weird like amorphous blob. And so just to like set up this argument, um, so you've probably seen those networks of the network pictures of the internet where they're kind of maps and there's all these like star points and little points going out everywhere. Those networks look vastly complex and they look similar to like a brain structure, so like a neural structure or something. But they're really dumb because each of those each of those nodes are kind of like proprietary and they're separate from it looks like this single network structure, but you know, Facebook has its servers, Amazon has its servers, uh, Google has its servers, and they don't speak to each other. They all have separate data formats and everything. You could probably argue that the only decentralized aspect of the internet right now is TCP IP um, and probably a few other things I don't know about, but even like the ICANN DNS system routing domain names is central. And so while the internet is the largest and longest running machine the human species has ever built, it's actually really dumb because it, not every part of it can talk to each other. There's segregated, siloed parts of the internet's brain. Just sort of this thing, you know that myth of like, you only use 10% of your brain? It's bullshit, by the way, but like, and then they're like, what if you could use 20%? What if you could use 50%? What if you could use 100% of your brain? NDT limitless, what? Well, what if the internet could access 100% of its brain? What if it could access every single computer, every single computational resource, every single piece of memory, every single piece of data, every human, every device on the network? This is where the blockchain comes in, oh yeah! So the blockchain that runs Bitcoin is kind of like a, um, uh, like how torrents work, how it's sharing, everyone's sharing the same file, but instead it's a ledger of every single transaction that's ever happened, you can't go back and change it. And Ethereum is kind of like taking the exact same concept, but allowing you to build apps uh, using an uh, inbuilt programming language to deploy it into this decentralized thing where it's not running on any servers, it's running across the entire network. And so this Ethereum platform is enabling the types of organizations and dApps and smart contracts and, and applications that have never before been possible in human history. We are living through amazing times. Okay, but back to that original concept. So digital, the internet is kind of like this amorphous blob that's like, you know, always changing. There's nothing fixed. You can't kind of like hold on to anything. There's nothing solid. There's nothing you can trust on there. Because any application that's deployed on the internet, sure, it might be running on like really secure backed up Amazon servers, but that's still owned by a corporation who's making profit off that, or it might get shut down. So you've got the internet, which is like this chaotic, chaotic blob, um, and then kind of out of nowhere, the Ethereum blockchain comes along and it's like, here's this spire of trust that everyone can, can latch onto out of the chaos. Or imagine it's like, this is the chaotic seed, the internet's the seed, and then a sproutling comes out, you know, from, from chaos, it, you know, creates order, and then from order, creates more chaos. Or you could perhaps see it as like a neural pathway. Um, I mean, the blockchain, the way it worked, is it's kind of like a fractal branching tree um, that, is, that is fixed. Its history is fixed. You can't unchange that. So it's like a neural pathway. This is a very visual concept. <laughs> like, let me know if you have any better ideas now to explain this. But yeah, so kind of like out of that trusted spire, it's kind of like a foundation for trust. And now all the humans are flocking to build on that foundation. And so the collective outcome of all of this is that, that within about 10 years, we'll completely restructure the entire web to be completely open, running all on a blockchain in the back end, um, and restructuring the web so I can talk to itself. Actually, Tim Berners-Lee, the original uh, inventor of the World Wide Web, he's recently been on a, t on a crusade to decentralize the web. So he's been running decentralization summits, and it's the same concept. And because by restructuring the web along blockchains, uh, and not only a single blockchain, like at the moment, but there's a thing called sharding. So imagine like tens of thousands, like trillions of blockchains branching off each other. So Ethereum kind of becomes like the primary neural cortex, and out of that will branch trillions of different uh, neural pathways. Um, and neural pathways encode memories, but they also uh, enable the flow of information to where they need to go. The net result of that is that every single part of the internet can talk to each other. It's completely open and trusted and it's just like a single entity. 
and that's how we wake it up. That's how we give the internet consciousness. So another interesting thought I've had in this whole concept is that subconscious drive for legacy. This is why humans have children, this is why we create art and make things, it's because we're aware of our own mortality and we want something to live beyond us. Unlike building a company now or like, you know, deploying an app on a server, with the blockchain you can actually build DAOs, like decentralized autonomous organizations that can never ever be shut down. They'll always exist. So the ultimate legacy would be to create a DAO that provides value to humanity for the next 10,000 years because it will always exist so long as the internet exists. That's a cool thought. So it's not your thoughts and your own interpretations. Is Ethereum building uh, the neural pathways into the global brain that is the internet? Whoa.